Uh, so newsflash for this week, we're going to be talking a little bit about Ajit Pai. He's under investigation, which is, uh, you know, he's a fuckface, so I think he deserves it. But I'm not going to focus that much on the Ajit Pai investigation. I just saw this and just thought, you know, I have to talk about this on the show. Apparently, Ajit Pai went to CPAC this week, and he got a re- an award from the NRA, the Charlton Heston Courage Under Fire Award. Oh, my God. He got a Courage Award for what? For repealing net neutrality. Literally, they were like, you are so brave for doing this. You have destroyed the internet. We love you for it. You went against what the majority of Americans are for. We love you for that. Here's a Courage Award. And guess what? Because it's the NRA, this award was a Kentucky handmade long gun. Oh, my God. He got a freaking gun as an award for repealing net neutrality. Like, that's like, that's surreal. That's like something out of an SNL skit. Yeah. Next, they'll be like, oh, we're going to have this nice uh, forces of evil alliance going on here. Like, that. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like a comedy skit. It's literally like a comedy skit. This is reality. This is fucking reality. <laughs> I, don't know, I just thought that was fucking amazing. All right, let's go to the Democrats. <laughs> it's all right. special. <laughs> It is. It, it, they, they all are very special. Uh, the California Democratic uh, State Convention for 2018 was this weekend, February 23rd to 25th. It was in San Diego. I wanted to go. A friend of mine was like, hey, I can take you. And then he got the flu. So oh. I didn't. Oh. It's very sad. <laughs> but uh, I watched a lot of it on uh, their Facebook stream, which had about 20 viewers, actually. <laughs> Not kidding. They had about 20 years. I was not surprised. Uh, So the California Democratic Convention, a few things happen here. Uh, They have speakers. They have like, uh, you know, supposed high profile Democrats like Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, all those Kamala Harris they have on, Tom Steyer. And, you know, they do speeches. Uh, They also have conferences where they make decisions to decisions uh, as to who the California Democratic Party will be endorsing for this election cycle. Now, there's about 167 endorsements that the California Democratic Party makes. Most of those endorsements are made prior to the convention. Most are made in their local uh, conferences and such. But those that struggle to make a decision on a particular race will be the endorsement decision will then be made at the convention. Uh, there were about two dozen races for statewide offices and some legislative uh, races that were decided at the convention this year. And uh, in order to get an endorsement, 60% of the delegates who are voting, and there are about 300 delegates who vote in vote uh, to decide who gets endorsed by the California Democratic Party, there you need to get about 60% to get the actual endorsement. Now, 60% being a large number and a large number, especially when considering that there are about that some races have like six, eight. Uh, maybe nine Democrats in a race, it's really hard for some races to actually make a decision on to who to endorse, which is why, of course, there are a few uh, Democrats in races who didn't get an endorsement by the California Democratic Party. Uh, This includes the California gubernatorial race, which it was kind of expected. Gavin Newsom, we have a few other, uh, Delaney Easton, they're all like running against each other and Getting 60% on that is hard. Uh, California Attorney General race, similar kind of situation. The California U.S. Senate race, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, (laughs) was also one of those that didn't have an endorsement. Uh, The California's 10th congressional district, that's the one that uh, Dottie Nygaard is running in right now. Uh, No endorsement there. California 25th district, that's the one that Brian Caporio, who is a Justice Democrat, and Katie Hill are currently running in. Uh, There was no endorsement there as well. Uh, California's 49th district, similar kind of situation as California's 49th is uh, is Doug uh, is uh, Daryl Issa's district, and that's the race that Doug Applegate and Mike Levin are currently running. Now, uh, that's the endorsement side of the California Democratic Convention. Like I said, there are speakers who go on stage and do all these great speeches, Uh, and you know, notable speakers once again: Maxine Waters, Kamala Harris, Tom Steyer, uh, LA Mayor Eric Garcetti, and more. And I and these are the ones that are basically streamed on Facebook, and the and it's basically what I watched during the weekend. And I gotta say, I'm not that impressed, (laughs) Uh, because. And this was uh, very similar to what happened uh, last time they had a convention uh, for the California Democrats, because I watched that one, too. Uh, Every single time I watch one of these, I'm kind of left going, yeah, this is why you guys lose. Because a lot of these speeches, while, you know, they're they're rowdy, the crowd loves it, they're mostly anti-Trump speeches, which 
isn't enough really at this point. I mean, we already saw how being just simply anti-Trump fails in elections. We saw that with Hillary Clinton. She was the I'm not Trump candidate. She was the America's already great. What are you talking about, candidate? She was the she was the Trump's bad. Look at me. I'm I'm slightly better, I guess, candidate. That doesn't work in elections. And yet Kamala, well, Kamala Harris is actually does give lip service to certain policies. Like she'll give lip service to Medicare for all during her speeches. She'll give lip service to things like raising the minimum wage to $15. She'll mention things like, oh, let's not take money from those corporations, which by the way, reminds me, Kamala Harris, when are you going to join your fellow 2020 potential candidates and actually take that pledge to stop taking corporate PAC money? Because Kristen Gillibrand and Cory Booker went on it. Even Cory Booker, the fake ass Cory Booker, even he went on that. Uh, but going back to my point, Maxine Waters, you get her on, she'll be like, hey, we need to impeach 45. I'm going to reclaim my time and we're going to impeach 45. We're going to impeach Trump. It's, it's, they keep on going at it. And that's not enough. Instead of just simply saying, oh, Trump's bad. And by the way, this is a, the California Democratic Convention. Everyone there agrees Trump's bad. We got it. We know that Steve Mnuchin's bad. We know that Betsy DeVos is bad. We know that Rex Tillerson is a former oil guy. No one's going to the California Democratic Convention thinking, thinking to themselves, oh, I don't have anything to do this weekend. No, people who go there are people who are already politically aware, politically active, people who already are Democrats, really, or you know, some people are the progressives on the left who are just there to try to support their local uh, progressive candidates. But uh, most of those people are Democrats. They understand that Trump's bad. Instead of just simply saying Trump's bad, what should be happening in these speeches is they should be talking about what the Democratic Party stands for. Instead of simply just saying, oh, immigration, that's an issue that Trump's bad in. OK, what would you do? Instead of just simply Trump's tax plan, that was bad. The middle class taxes, they aren't permanent. Instead of just going off on that, present a Trump, not a Trump tax plan, present a tax plan of your own. What do you guys stand for? This is the California Democratic Convention. This is where you're surrounded by your allies. This is where you say, this is what we're for. This is our vision. This is why you should vote for us. This is why in 2018, you should be voting for, voting us into the House, voting us into the Senate. This is why there should be a blue wave. And this is why the blue wave should be, a lot of it should be coming from California. That's what should be happening. It's not. And it, it sort of reminds me of this great West Wing quote that, uh, that I remember, uh, it, it's from Josh, uh, it's from that character in West Wing, uh, Josh Lyman. And uh, he, in it, he's basically talking to a presidential candidate who he's really frustrated with because he wants the presidential candidate to talk about policy. They're refusing to talk about policy and the guy's like, well, what do you want from me? And Josh Lyman says, I don't know what we're for. I don't know what we're against, except we seem to be for winning and against the other guy winning which is exactly what's happening with the Democratic Party right now, which is exactly what's happening in the California Democratic Convention right here. What are you guys for? What are you guys stand for? What are you guys going to actually fight for? Instead of simply saying Trump's bad, what are you guys going to do instead? What are you guys going to make happen? How are you going to help us? If you guys are able to push forward a vision that includes being for Medicare for all, being for college for all, raising the minimum wage to $15, getting money out of politics, uh, net neutrality. If you guys ran on those things and really pushed this vision and saying, hey, we're going to fight for this. We're going to fight to make your lives better in this way. If you guys actually did that, instead of saying Trump's bad, we need to impeach Trump. Trump's terrible. We got that. We got that. The people there understand that. Outsiders aren't going to be really watching your guys' convention. Like I said, Facebook, 20 viewers. The people who are there are the people who support you. Instead of just simply stating the obvious, you guys need to actually stand up and push a vision, push forward what you guys are for. Because right now, nobody knows what the fuck the Democratic Party stands for. We just know you're against Trump. <clears throat> like, like I say, the Democrats' motto, we stand for nothing. OK, California Democratic Convention, disappointing, <laughs> but we did get something good out of it. The California Democrats decided not to endorse Dianne Feinstein, which is pretty good, pretty good. I'm not going to lie, pretty happy about that. I actually woke up to this news, found it in the Uphill Media Slack chat, and I was like, yeah, woo -woo. <laughs> did my little dance. <laughs> I put Die that there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, 
in, like I said before, in order for the, a candidate to get an endorsement from the California Democratic Party, uh, they need to get 60% of votes from the delegates. And what happened to Dianne Feinstein's surprise was that she didn't get 60% of the votes. In fact, she got a lot less than that. And part of the reason why that happened was because Kevin DeLeon was there. Kevin DeLeon was actually challenging her. And weirdly enough, people were like, you know what? We've had enough of Dianne Feinstein. We're going to go and back Kevin DeLeon now. And now this is part, now I want to go to the results uh, of the delegates. Kevin DeLeon got 54% of the vote. Dianne Feinstein got a miserable 37%. And Pat Harris was also there. He's the he's a progressive candidate running against uh, Diane Feinstein right now. He got five percent, and three percent went for no endorsement. Thirty-seven percent, only thirty-seven. We're like, you know what? We're gonna go with Diane Feinstein. The rest went, eh. It's I think it's time for her to go. Now, is this because of the progressive pressure that's been going? Is this because progressives have been saying, hey, Diane Feinstein, you're not for Medicare for all. You voted for all of those war. You're one of the most hawkish Democrats out there. We don't think we don't want you anymore. Is that part of the reason why this happened? Partially. The other part is that the people who are more to the, more, to the moderate side of the Democratic Party, they saw Dianne Feinstein and went, you're getting old. And it, there's a bit of ageism in this race, which makes this race kind of interesting, actually. Because on one side, there's the progressives who really care about policy. On the, on the other side, there's the people who are saying, it's, there's a time for you to retire. And I think some of those people and the progressives actually went and said, yeah, enough with you, Dianne Feinstein. And some of the more progressive people actually went with Pat Harris and the people and the rest went for Kevin DeLeon because Kevin DeLeon in his 50s, uh, sort of up and coming, you could say, in California, they backed him. So and, nothing for yeah. David and nothing for Allison. They David and work. Allison didn't even try. They didn't even go for the uh, endorsement. They were like, uh, you know what? It, it doesn't make sense for us. Uh, we're just going to skip it completely. I see. Okay. Yeah, thank yeah. you. That clarifies that. It's like, where are they on this list? I know. Yeah. <laughs> They're our buddies. Uh, well, yeah, and that's a decision that some progressive candidates actually decide to make. Some people bash them on it, saying you should at least try. Others will say, yeah, that makes sense. We know the Democratic Party is corrupt as fuck. And, and to be honest with you, this is just an endorsement from the California Democratic Party. And like I said, from their abysmal convention, you can tell their endorsement doesn't really necessarily mean that much anymore. So uh, it, it is just one thing. And this doesn't necessarily mean, by the way, that Dianne Feinstein's done. No, this race isn't done. It's far from it. Uh, if you look at some of the more recent polling that's been done, Dianne Feinstein is still winning even when put up against Kevin DeLeon. Kevin DeLeon, according to these polls, do ha does have a better chance than Dianne Feinstein. But to be fair, most progressive candidates are not on that list either. So... There may be a reason behind that, which leads to the general discussion of what does the U.S. California Senate race in general look like right now? Well, on one hand, there's Dianne Feinstein and then the Dianne Feinstein light, as David Hilderman likes to call it, Kevin DeLeon. And those people are basically splitting up the votes that might have gone for Dianne Feinstein herself if Kevin DeLeon wasn't running. So that's splitting up the vote there. But then we also have like three, four different progressive candidates. We might actually have more uh, running in this race. The most notable ones for the time being are David Holderband, Allison Hartson, and Pat Harris. And there's a, there are a lot of people on the left who are, of course, worried that this is going to split up the progressive vote. And I think it is a valid concern. But unless you can convince one of them to drop out right now, it's a concern that we're going to have to live with. And I say we make the best of it once again, have debates, have town halls, hear each of these candidates out. At some point, I think it'll start to become clear who is the best, uh, who is the most progressive when it comes to policy. And we'll start to back them. And maybe at, in uh, the primaries in June. So we do have a small bit of time in between from now to the primary. And I think some of these, maybe one or two of the progressive candidates in this race right now might drop out and endorse the other. And we'll see how that goes. But this is a super interesting race. Dianne Feinstein might have been confident in the beginning. But after this, I don't think so. And allegedly, I don't know if this is true, her head exploded once you heard she didn't get the backing of the California Democratic Party. Oh, really? So. <laughs> I hope so. I wonder if she'll uh, drop out. Uh, that, that, would, that would make this really interesting, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, we're, Adriel was saying that, um, that he didn't think that, uh, that Allison Hartson made a very strong showing. 
this weekend uh, for the California Demi. Yeah, it just wasn't yeah. very engaged. You know, D- David was really was really on. Yeah, um, David met Tulsi Gabbard actually. I know, cool. and yeah. yeah, and Stephen Jaffe was all over the place too. Oh yeah, Stephen so. Jaffe. Yeah. Hey Joe, did you did you yeah. see that optically? It was a big bash to Diane on Twitter. I mean, that trended for quite some time, the fact that she didn't get the endorsement. So I think at least optically it yeah. hurt her. Uh, and, and we'll see some of that effect in the, in the primary. Yeah, yeah. We, we, it, it will, uh, especially because the people who will support uh, Diane Feinstein are people who are affected by the California Democratic Party endorsement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like if Allison Hartson and David Hildebrand didn't get the endorsement, we'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah. this is Diane Feinstein and her yeah. now. So. 